In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the derivative of a parametric function. So let's say we have this particular parametric function where x is 8 plus t squared. And then let's say that y is 4t squared minus 5t to the 4. And our goal is to find dy dx. How can we do so? Well, the first thing we need to do is find dx dt and dy dt. So dx dt is going to be the derivative of 8 plus t squared with respect to t. So the derivative of 8, that's a constant, that's going to be 0. And the derivative of t squared using the power rule is 2t to the first power, or simply 2t. Now to find dy dt, it's going to be the derivative of t squared, which is 2t times 4. And the derivative of t to the 4 is 4t to the third. So this becomes 8t minus 20t to the third. Now, in order to find a function for dy dx, it's simply dy dt divided by dx dt. So all we need to do at this point is divide this expression by this one. So it's going to be 8t minus 20t to the third divided by 2t. And it turns out that we could divide each term by 2t in the numerator. 8t divided by 2t, that's going to give us 4. And negative 20t to the third divided by 2, negative 20 divided by 2 is negative 10. And t to the third divided by t to the first power. 3 minus 1 is 2, so we're going to get t squared. And so this is equal to dy dx with respect to t. Now it's your turn. So let's say that x is equal to t to the third power and y is equal to 6t squared minus 15t to the third power. Go ahead and find dy dx based on the last example. So first let's find dx dt. The derivative of t to the third, that's going to be 3 t squared. And now let's move on to dy dt. The derivative of t squared is 2t, and the derivative of t to the 13 is 3t squared. So this is going to be 6 times 2, which is 12, and 15 times 3, that's 45. So now we can find dy dx. So that's going to be dy over dt divided by dx over dt. So dy dt is what we see here. And this is dx dt. So it's going to be 12 t minus 45 t squared divided by 3 t squared. Now we can divide 12 t by 3 t squared and we can also divide negative 45 t squared by 3 t squared. So what I'm going to do is separate it into two fractions. So dy dx, that's equal to 12t over 3t squared, and then minus 45t squared over the same thing. Now, 12 divided by 3, that's 4. And t divided by t squared, initially, that's t to the minus 1. 45 over 3, that's 15. And t squared divided by t squared, those two will cancel. And so we can write our final answer as 4 over t minus 15. And so that's it for this problem. That's how you can find dy dx when given parametric equations. Here's another example for you, but this one involves trigonometric functions. So let's say that x is 4 sine t and y is 12 cosine t. Go ahead and find dy dx. So let's start with dx dt. The derivative of sine is cosine. And for dy dt, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we can rewrite dy dt as negative 12 sine t. So now that we have dy dt and dx dt, we can determine dy dx. So dy over dx, that's going to be dy dt, which is negative 12 
sine t divided by dx dt, which is 4 cosine t. Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3, and sine divided by cosine is tangent. So the answer is negative 3 tangent t. Now let's say that x is equal to 3 secant theta, and y is equal to 18 tangent theta minus 5. How can we find dy over dx for this example? So this time, we have the variable theta as opposed to the variable t. So what we need to do is find dx d theta, which is going to be 3 times the derivative of secant, and that's secant tangent. Now we need to find dy d theta. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, and the derivative of negative 5 is 0. So dy over dx, that's going to be dy over d theta divided by dx over d theta. And so we just got to divide these two. So we're going to have 18 secant squared divided by 3 secant theta tangent theta. Now we need to simplify. So first, let's divide 18 by 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6. And we can cancel a secant. Secant squared divided by secant is secant, but that's going to be on the top. And then we have a tangent on the bottom. So right now we have 6 secant over tangent theta. So now we need to simplify that trigonometric expression. So I'm going to rewrite this as 6 times secant times 1 over tangent theta. Now secant, we know that's 1 over cosine. And tangent is sine divided by cosine. So 1 over tangent is cosine over sine, which is the same as cotangent. So at this point, we can cancel a cosine. And so what we have at this point is 6 times 1 over sine theta. Now what function is represented by 1 over sine theta? 1 over sine theta is cosecant. So our answer is 6 times cosecant theta. And that's dy dx for this example. Let's try one more problem with trigonometric functions. So let's say that x is cosine cubed theta and y is 4 sine cubed theta. So go ahead and find the function that correlates to dy over dx. Now the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the expression. So I'm going to rewrite x as cosine theta raised to the third power. And y, I'm going to write that as 4 sine theta to the third power. So now, let's find dx d theta. We need to use the chain rule. So the first thing we're going to do is move the 3 to the front. And then we're going to keep the inside function the same. So that's cosine theta. And then according to the power rule, we're going to subtract 3 by 1, which will give us 2. And according to the chain rule, we need to take the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Now let's do the same thing for dy d theta. So let's rewrite the constant 4. And then let's move the 3 to the front. So we're going to have 4 times 3. And then keep the inside function the same. Subtract the exponent by 1. And then take the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So now let's use this formula to determine dy over dx. So it's dy divided by d theta over dx divided by d theta. So dy over d theta, that's 4 times 3, which is 12. So we're going to have 12 sine squared theta cosine theta. And dx d theta, that's 3 cosine squared theta times negative sine theta. Twelve divided by three is four. 
Now we can cancel sine. Sine squared divided by sine is sine theta on top. And cosine divided by cosine squared, that's going to leave one cosine on the bottom. And let's not forget the negative sign that we have here. So sine of a cosine is tangent. So we're going to get negative 4 tangent theta. So that's equal to dy over dx in terms of theta.